<laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. I'm glad to hear that you are, I guess my connectivity is somehow interesting for you to get me. Uh, we, we see your picture, a standing still picture, but the audio is okay. The system tells oh, okay. me it's a poor internet signal. Then surely it should, it should maybe be due to my uh, webcam issue, but I don't know. Well, okay. most important, tell me, how do you pronounce your name bef before I say it wrong one more time? No, don't worry. I guess you have <laughs> been doing that well ever <laughs> since you started. Okay. So um, I'm called um, Gislem Bapa. And uh, I'm the communication uh, liable of uh, Wipad in Cameroon, here in Cameroon. Ah, okay. Yeah, so uh, I guess you have, you have heard about Wipad, so uh, I, have. I don't think it's a surprise for you. I have, obviously, but I'm not standing here only for myself as a person. If, why don't you just introduce what Wipad is for all those people that are listening? All right, okay. So uh, what I can say is that uh, Wipad is an international platform of uh, youths engaged in agriculture, in which uh, the main objective and the vision is to promote the agriculture towards the youths and uh, bring them to be able to play uh, alongside agriculture and uh, the new technological information tools, that is ICTs. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are always en we are engaged in activities in which the the main the cornerstone of the activity is to promote youth to get more engaged into agriculture, especially for the African continent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did you, for example, you might have seen some of the stuff or the things that we discussed with Karen last time we had a blab, or you you might know uh, know his uh, the recordings of of his videos. Is that okay? Sort let's of thing okay about you... uh, tech tech for agri. Yes. Yeah, I've been following it uh, via the, our D groups discussion via the mails. And so I'm um, somehow where do you pretty. See these uh, the potential for this uh, for this stuff. I mean, is this reaching people from your perspective? Yeah, as far as uh, Wild Path Cameroon is concerned, in our country, it's a really great initiative to say, because um, as you said, it's uh, the farmers at the grassroots that are the pull for the development of a of a nation and as well for the world at large. So such initiatives like uh, this youth in agribusiness, agri which was launched by uh, in, Inusa and uh, Naoshin, as well as what Karen has been doing so far, as far as Tech for Agri is concerned, is uh, a really interesting initiative. It's a really interesting initiative for us. And how, can you substantiate a little bit? How do, from your perspective, how do people actually get access how do how do normal young farmers or potential young farmers people on the edge basically maybe being sons and daughters of, of farmers where do they see this sort of video material where do they discuss that or do you promote that somehow do you take your mobile if you're somewhere in a wi-fi zone and, and show it to them <laughs> or, and say listen you gotta see this from trinidad we need to do that here as well yeah, um, as far as I do think that uh, if I have to just take a look here in my country, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's an aspect which is really recent, if I can call it, if I can bring it that way, it's really recent in our country. So much is still to be done in Cameroon for to reach this I I ideology of being able to practice an agriculture using conventional new tools of uh, ICTs being in a farm, working with your, 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 your laptop, your mobile phone, your smartphones, to be able to grab information more easily and put it into practice immediately in your agricultural field. But uh, as far as you are concerned, almost what we see as uh, ICT, for, uh, ICT for agriculture development worldwide is something that we really take into account and uh, we put in the means in our own ways to promote it to youth here in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. for them to better perceive what is the essence of uh, glancing of playing on both sides using ICTs and as well practicing a more conventional and modernized agriculture. Yeah. I guess that's though a little bit of a separate subject to talk about the use of ICT in agriculture or to use the networking capacity of ICT technology to to carry forward knowledge to people 
Yeah, I um, think, uh, yes. Yeah, can you follow me? Because I, I know that obviously people that are sort of, affin what do you call it, savvy or tech affinite, uh, <laughs> they, they obviously, you know, have a tendency to then also look into using ICT in their farming business, ideally. Yeah. But it's, it's a different thing. So my, my question was, the first question was obviously referring more. How do you actually, how far is the reach? What do you think and what can you do to actually promote and get that video footage to people that, that they actually get that first contact? Okay. Uh, at well, mostly what we do we, as far as we are concerned is that uh, we mostly organize uh, workshops and uh, some sorts of uh, capacity building trainings at the rural at rural communities first mm -hmm. to let them get to know how uh, what it's all about and obviously put it into practice at the level of uh, the field because uh, here in Cameroon first if I have to take a little example we first of all have this uh, difficulty of not having a widespread connectivity in all zones mm -hmm. so there are obviously certain communities that wouldn't be able to benefit of to have benefits of such an experience but due to some success stories that we take on uh, youth, young agripreneurs that have already been able to carry on certain such activity, we grab these videos and we do some sort of a promotion to get uh, youth to be more engaged and more involved in uh, this process. So practically that means you go in some office or where you have Wi-Fi and you, you download the materials, you, you put them into a folder and then you go into, into places and you show it there off your tablet or how can we actually visualize this? How, how is it actually taking place? Let's just say, um, first of all, we have, a, 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 we're here in Cameroon, we have a good uh, partner, a young journalist, agricultural journalist who uh, with her tools, her uh, ICT tools, her camera, she just does nearly the same uh, approach as uh, what uh, is done by now she, uh, Agri Business Web TV mm -hmm. to uh, get to get closer to those agri young agripreneurs that have already assimilated this concept and are putting them in practice in their various uh, communities. And when we have them in our baseline, in our database, we can take these sorts of success stories and... Uh, promote them to other zones where they have this, uh, I, this tool uh, difficulties to have access to those tools, at least for them to already have an idea of uh, the tendency in which agricultural uh, agro-innovation is going on already in their country and as well at large. Can I ask you something? Maybe it's a bit unfair because you were the, the person that actually came online, so I'm asking you a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know development cooperation always looks for for obvious reasons to to help the poorest people yeah the poorest people are often for you know not not the people that have access to ict as such because they also they don't have the means to actually um they might have a cell phone but not a smartphone they're not you know or sure. if they do, so do you think, you know, and there's obviously this, this, this thing that we don't want to leave anyone behind if we help uh, promoting agribusiness. Yeah. Where do you see, where do you see the line? Is this actually an issue or, uh, you know, I'm not asking you to come up with a political statement in the sense of we need to help those first and then the other ones sort of will, will, will follow <laughs> path, but maybe give me your assessment. How many people do we reach? What, what kind of people are those? Are those youngsters that have those, those that technology available? Are they already on the verge of being somewhere uh, higher up in the market when they do their own agri business later on? Good. Um, I can. What I can say is, uh, for for a start, already when an individual or a young agripreneur already has the tools at his disposal, already having in mind that he needs to promote his business and uh, to develop his activity he has you always get involved in uh, practicing modernized techniques to get his activity being promoted mm. so um as far as i'm concerned i think it has a, this act this initiative has a really high uh, appreciation 
really has a high appreciation worldwide and uh, especially for us here in Africa, in which uh, due to the fact that we have a lot of uh, natural, uh, we still have a lot of natural resources at our disposal. So uh, it's, it will be worthwhile interesting to promote it and to use it rationally to make sure that uh, its use, proper utility can be of benefit to all social class populations. Mm. So to my own personal perspective, I think uh, this initiative of uh, practicing of use in agribusiness is really something uh, of uh, a great uh, and very good so far as all the classes are concerned. And if mm. the basis have been well explained to all those who are really engaged in this process, I think we'll really have a, a very great output. Okay. But honestly, you missed a little bit my question. I wanted to get <laughs> a little bit the assessment how far you think that reach already is and who, whom does it reach actually? That it is a good idea that's, that everybody should be reached and carried through. It's maybe a little bit of a given, yeah? But um, okay. do, do you, do you, what, you know, how many, how many people, what's your potential? What, at, at what level are those youngsters that you, that you can reach? At what, you know, are they on the edge of setting up their business? Are you just trying to maybe, well, what would you say? Are you just trying to keep them in agriculture, maybe in their parents' agricultural business, not to go to the city? Do you want to keep them in or, or you really... Is, is that the target group? Uh, what do you think? No, I think that uh, as uh, to promote development in the country, uh, as we all know, there is what we call an intergenerational evolution. Mm -hmm. So when youths are being, uh, when we assess youths to get involved in social activities, it's not for them to rely on what their parents have been doing so far in the past. It's for them to uh, have some knowledge about what they did and with what the innovative aspect that is being done day in, day out worldwide, it has to permit them to go on their own and to develop their own proper business. So I guess uh, getting, getting you to bring in, uh, coming close to you to get access to such uh, initiative and ideas is to permit them to be able to go on their own for a start. And if there is a possibility for them to be followed or to be monitored by uh, governmental institutions or uh international stakeholders it could ov obviously be of benefit for them mm -hmm. so the deal is for youth first of all to before going to get getting to know better the conventional and modern modernized aspects of agriculture so they should first of all have a, ba a well and solidified background on what has been doing on the past and with the new tools and abilities that have been brought to their own disposal they can be able to join the two parts and go to fly off on their own obviously as a youth uh, depending on the zones it's not all you have this ab ability to have the necessary funding to launch a real business so obviously he needs to be followed and uh, assisted mm -hmm. for immense for a start and uh, hoping that after a certain prelapse of time he'll be able to fly off on his own mm -hmm. that's a that's a good point what's what would you say is the main source for this getting those in, initial funds is it is okay. it relatives is that the, the the savings group around that might have been uh, financed is it is it government is it maybe donor funding through some ngo or what what would you say in in your place obviously not in general okay um in my place i will say um if you have to look it in a, some sort of a globalized manner, uh, obviously it's a state to individual affair. If I have to look it that way, it's a state to individual affair. That is, even if a youth has the ability to have their, their resources in this uh, daily entourage, that is his relative families or uh, associations, I don't think he will have this, um, it will permit him to really launch a real business and uh, get himself really involved to really yield better outputs. But if the government uh, really put in place policies and uh, means to follow this use from one step to another for, it, for him to attain a particular objective, I think it will be a better approach. Because
governmental institutions have this easy this easiness to come close to uh, international stakeholders in, with which they can bring about um, some policies, some programs, some projects, mm -hmm. which can uh, permit you to get inserted in these programs and they can be followed. So far as they have been, these youths have been trained to have to be able to mount really uh, innov agro-innovative projects for it to have a real impact in the agroeconomic level of the country. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, I do think that, okay, at the basis, they can have uh, the fundings, but these fundings cannot really be of uh, a high impact to permit these youths to carry on a, a project that can say can even last for two years and three years without lack for shortage funding shortages. But when the government is uh, involved in this process, I really think that uh, the, the the outcome of it will really be of will really be better. I would claim that it depends on the government in place if that's <laughs> going to work, and and uh, like with any sort of investor that you take, it depends what kind of uh, influence the investor wants to take. Obviously, he wants to take him. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, now, you were going very much sort of with the agricultural development route for youngsters. You would go on the route towards government and programs, and that is more longer term and you know policies I, I think actually policies usually don't have money in them what they shouldn't have money in them uh, and um, what what do you think is isn't it better to to find ways on a, a straight a business oriented approach from the very beginning to say I'm, I'm going to get this amount of money from a private investor which is a big big drawer obviously a huge you know, lots of different people in there and organizations but i get mm -hmm. money i make a business plan and by six months eight months whatever the case i get the break even and then then i'm going to get into writing uh, you know making some profits if you get involved with government this sort of that usually is a bit of a, a mixed system you know you get tax refunds or you get sort of policy ad advantages over some other groups it's a difficult story and um, wouldn't you say that a sort of private sector involvement based on some obviously some policies behind it from from government that make it easier for you to succeed but wouldn't that be better to to not look too much to government but more to private sector yeah um as, uh, as i was just saying it's uh, better as you say obviously to have a, a, a look prior obviously to the private sector and uh, what I can just say is that, uh, as I've been saying so far, I'll obviously be taking uh, the approach on what is happening in my country. Uh, obviously, for it to be to have a, to get a pro uh, an approach on the private sector, it means the youth in, on its own first of all needs to know how to reach the private sector, that mm -hmm. is the private investors, mm -hmm. and for him or her to reach at this extent, obviously. If he do, if he doesn't have the 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 means or he doesn't know how to go around, obviously he has to be trained. Mm. He has to get used to some uh, tools like uh, the Web 2.0 and uh, social media, which are tools that permit one to be able to have better research results mm. on uh, such relevant aspect. Because as you said uh, at the beginning, private uh, investors always have their own. Uh, baselines on where they really need to, to invest. And uh, for that, for a youth to come close to such an individual, he first of all needs to find the person, get to know the needs and uh, the needs of the person, in which sector does the, the individual investor really has an access, has really an uh, interest in investing. And with that in mind, it can really permit him now to uh, develop his uh, business plan, his projects, and uh, Submits for eventually an eventual uh, funding, but uh, the truth so far is uh, getting uh, an approach to to the private sector is what's better than uh, uh, taking all putting everything just to the government for them to 
finance because as you said there are these tax issues um, uh, land payments and all the rest that always arises and which may have an impact on the final outcome of the, the project so mm -hmm. i do abide with the fact that uh, getting closer to the private to a private investment or a private sector investment for a proper development of a project is a better approach but now the thing is how are you going to get to that person does the need of the person allies with what you are able and capable of fulfilling in terms of field activity and uh, obviously if it doesn't uh, have a certain uh, mutuality you have to be working searching more often to really come to the person who will be able to invest on uh, the project which is prior to your conviction and to your capabilities okay we don't know each other personally and i know that you're in cameroon you came on to the show now and it's a great conversation so far but let me ask you a somewhat personal question i don't know if you have yeah. uh, if you have a business already somewhere or something lined up and obviously mm -hmm. you're talking to me so you're not assumingly the very regular person on on your streets but anyway we're talking about investors private investors that could be companies and that could be banks yeah they are obviously slightly different if you go to a bank they want to take part of your share part of your profit a private investor as well that's may, maybe the same thing but they operate on a different idea if you go out there now would you know where to get either one of those two options where to get money from if you had a good idea do you do you know and, and if you do know do you think that most of your your fellow youngster that are interested in in making money maybe in agriculture and promoting it would they know how to do it where to get it where to start but i for one uh, i will say it's uh, thanks to my training on uh, web 2.0 and social media that i can say I, i can really know where to carry on my research in order to gain the necessary fundings that can be asked that can be prior to my uh, field activity Mm -hmm. But for the other youngsters, uh, if they are not, uh, they don't have this, uh, they are not engaged, first of all, in getting closer to the ICT world, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be difficult for them to come close to such investors. Because as you said, obviously, if you have to go to companies and banks, there are some terms and conditions that have, that needs to be fulfilled mm -hmm. for a prior investment. But with uh, a peculiar knowledge and a proper use of uh, ICT of ICT tools, if I can say, via the internet and uh, other means, you can easily come to, yeah, to find the investor that can help you out as far as uh, it's possible. So to my own personal perspective, that is uh, what I can say about. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe there is a, a model here. I mean, this sort of, this sort of interaction, I mean, could be could be a way to actually bring these two sides together i suppose right eh? i mean yeah you could you could grab some of your fellows that don't have your kind of level of training and put them sit next to you and on the other side you could organize somebody from a, a development bank or for rabo bank or whatever and and get that facilitated obviously these people operate in much larger quantities usually that's but that's I suppose that's a systemic problem eh? that banks are not really it's not so easy for them to invest in very small quantities because you know of the costs involved but yeah can, can, um, you, can you see something like that happening that the tools would be used to actually uh, bring people together in the sense that there's intermediaries like you and me on the one side a person like me maybe not not exactly like me but would bring the people online and uh, someone on your side that that has that that uh, yeah that um, experience with the social media but also knows the crowd around them yeah um i'll share i'll just share with you guys uh, with you a initiative that i just brought about to my uh, national coordinator coordination team in whiteboard and we are trying to make our best to make it fulfilled because we really think it will obviously have a high impact in terms of visibility and uh, youth engagement in uh, agriculture and agribusiness 
So the point is, um, I've been due to my abilities via the web two and social media. I came in touch with uh, an event that's supposed to come to Cameroon by ending July, as on the, it's going to be the second uh, agribusiness summit mm. that's going to be in Cameroon. And uh, after having a look and uh, in consultation with our country representative, I had to I mounted a a uh, communication information and knowledge management uh, project proposal, which uh, I intend to submit to the organizing team of that event later this week, in which in that uh, project, we want to be the one of the main youth agric agricultural youth organization engaged in the process. And uh, what was, what is, what is meant, what is our objective to participate? Uh, the objective is, first of all, to bring youths to get to know better what is uh, agribusiness all about. That's the first point. Uh, the second point, too, is to permit them to get to know how uh, the agricultural development system is moving on worldwide. And uh, to reach that extent, we intended, we plan to uh, practice to make a capacity building or a training on uh, Web2 and social media and well as another training, a day or a two day training on how to start a small farm business for that, uh, so that all youths, if present during these events, will be able to capitalize better, get to know really how to start, be it uh, for a household issue or for a really big project. Because uh, here in Cameroon, agribusiness is uh, something that isn't perceived as a I can say a higher rate as in other African countries. So we had in mind that this, our participation in uh, such an event, having a side, a peculiar side event in which we are going to train the youth on uh, web two and social media. And we are again going to train the youth thanks to some uh, agri-economist experts that will be present on how to start a small farm agribusiness. And uh, I really think that if we have this uh, opportunity to express ourselves and uh, bringing as much use as possible uh, obviously is going to brainstorm them better and uh, widen their, their spirits on uh, the essence and the impact of uh, practicing these activities and uh, aligning it to uh, ICTs and uh, the Web2 for a proper evolution, personal evolution. So that's a project that I remounted and is still under finalization before submission. And I guess if by God's grace it's, it is approved, it's obviously going to be something really great, especially for the Cameroonian youngsters who are coming to get engaged in this uh, sector. Mm -hmm. sounds, sounds like an interesting uh, project, really. I mean, I would be interested to see uh, how this actually goes further and how you actually well, you actually manage to get that excitement into into the people. I think part of the excitement that that we see for the kind of stuff that we do now is obviously that it's it's a, it's flashy. It's on the internet. It's social media, and it's ICT. And uh, I think you know you need to get get some of that glamour in a way, maybe over into your agriculture business. And uh, yeah. That's, that's so um, question, right? it's uh, as I said, it's something we we really intend to to carry out because um, we are trying to develop this culture in the youth. Uh, when we have when I have a, a look on how it is really evolving in uh, other countries, like this morning, I came in touch with. Uh, a, an expert in from Ivory Coast who promoted uh, the creation of a new website talking about um, um, agri agriculture and agribusiness in Ivory Coast. And I, I, while reading the content, it was something a little bit closer to what they use in agribusiness web TV. And uh, I had to I call the attention of the administrator to get close also to this uh, use in agribusiness web TV because these are really uh, little but important issues that uh, that can permit a nation or a continent to really develop their agricultural development systems for a better notoriety. And uh, 
with that, when you see countries um, have, have sites or neighboring countries developing that way, uh, obviously it has to galvanize you as uh, it used to really uh, bring it also to your country and uh, to make you to get uh, to apprehend it that way because uh, it's all these little actions that are done uh, from one place and the other that can really uh, have a greater impact in the upcoming years. So with, or with all that, that we are really, that I can say is our main annual project and uh, we shall uh, give in the, the efforts to make it happen because we know it shall obviously have a really great impact, especially for the youth who are not, oh, I can see haven't an idea of uh, the power of agribusiness in, uh, in, uh, agri in the agricultural sector. I would assume that talking about taking the, 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 the glamour of, of uh, modern media, electronic digital media, would be a good idea to actually cover your initiatives extensively with video and so forth to see what, how did the whole thing started so that you can plant a seed literally and take that on yeah. for the next people and to get, get a bit of a wave going. I, I would assume that this could be a good good idea to uh, to go and maybe another thing is um do you do you think it's it's a good idea to maybe fish for these candidates that you want to make interest uh, to you, that you want to get interested in agriculture to fish in the suburbs or in the in the cities of of Cameroon and the bigger places for people that already have a little bit of, more of a education that know a little bit about social media so that you can actually attract them. And well, some, some of them might even be a little bit fed up with, uh, with, with city life in a way and, and <laughs> wouldn't mind. Uh, it's, it's, I know it's a bit, maybe a bit exaggerated, but you know, at least in places here in the first world, there, there, there's uh, family farms that are given up. And there's uh, families in the in the big cities, you know, that want to move out, you know. So all the the, the farmer has like I don't know four children, and none of them wants to actually take on the dad's farming business. But there's a family in the city that actually is is tired of living in in a small so flat. Huh? Mm. So I'm just, do, do you think there there or where do you think you w would get the the your your candidates your your um, the targets if you want in in terms of communications okay um i think uh, your point is really of uh, great of, of great interest and uh, i do think that uh, if we come close there are here first of all in our country there are some uh, professional institutions that train uh, youth in rural communities on uh, better agricultural practice so um, I think the first, the first uh, target shall be those youths who are from these rural communities that leave their from rural zones and come for professional training to get to know the new conventional tips and tools on how to practice a really better agricultural practice. And uh, it shall proudly, proudly be these youths that shall be uh, called for the the meeting already for this event, because uh, as I was glanced, as I was discussing with one of the focal points of this uh, event, uh, the hosting area for the event is not in a, if I can say, is such a in a big city. Mm. So it's uh, it has been sent in one uh, high agricultural product productive productive zone which can be, if I wish I can say, it's not that of uh, a high standardized city or a modernized city. And uh, in that zone, there are so many professional uh, institutions that uh, train rural youths on uh, those techniques. So I guess it will be those youths that are living in their rural communities to come closer to the cities via these professional institutions to get trained that shall be our main target. Uh, for a start and uh, as well um, we can say even in cities you know agriculture is not only rural these days it's now mm. tending to be urban and uh, peri-urban so uh, even this class of uh, youth population can be 
invited to come and uh, attend to such uh, an event. Obviously, we shall be free of charge. And uh, for a start, I think that's what we have in mind now. And uh, as time goes by, we shall obviously be discussing on how to have a to have a better targeted audience, especially those in the rural communities. Mm -hmm. I guess my idea was basically, you know, let's let me put it this way. Sometimes it's it's easier to invite people to your party from the outside that haven't been there and trying to get them over, then try to keep those who were on the party already for a long time to trying to keep them stay, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and make them stay. So that, that was basically the idea, you know, there, if, if some of the youngsters want to go to the, to the larger towns and, and experience what living there means, uh, you probably can't really keep them from doing that. Be for sure because they see what agriculture is like and then you come maybe with your camera there and they say well i'm not so sure if this will go so maybe <laughs> maybe you go to the to the youngsters in the in in the larger town and tell they know what the city life is about and they they say well it's also not that great so let me let me just check this other thing out so <laughs> yeah i don't know but if i think um useful, yeah. Uh, I think for for this case to be controlled in a better way, it depends first on uh, the communication abilities. I can, if I can say so, because um, as experience, mostly when you go to a rural zone where they don't have access to such uh, modernized tools like cameras or smartphones or all alike, especially users are somehow a little bit excited to know ah. What is this utility? Why is this guy so focused on us? What is he doing? What is the main function? And uh, when you see such, obviously, they have this in their, in their minds to really get to know what is uh, its utility and its function. And uh, when you come with a, some sort of a, an approach, which is similar to their regular habits, it can really ease um, communication. Yeah. Originally is communication. Like uh, if I can just take a little example, imagine for instance, if you are going to a zone where uh, people don't have lights, they don't have uh, uh, their roads, infrastructural roads are really, it's really a mess and uh, they drink water from rivers, streams and other like. And then you live in the city and coming to their zone, you are coming along, you have your your solar panel battery, you have bought your water, you have brought your clothes and all the like to not accommodate to your daily habits. Obviously, you create a gap between mm -hmm. them and setting you in your day-to-day -day activities. But if you come just like that and you decide to fit into their daily habits, what they eat, what they drink, and uh, what they do, Obviously, those are little tips that can obviously permit you guys to come a little bit closer. And like that, you can easily exchange with them and uh, bring your new perspective on uh, what you want to get from them. And if you do it well, obviously, the, the answer shall always be yes. So I think uh, that can be an approach that can really uh, reduce this, uh, this gap between uh, those in rural zones and those in uh, Urbanized zones, as you said, those in cities, they are used to modern things, modernized tools and all that. Like, so when they are, when you come again with them too close to them to say, ah, okay, we have uh, these issues that will happen this way, that way. Well, it will be some sort they can obviously accept as well as they can really deny that they won't be there or they will be there. But when you go to a rural community and uh, you come with a simple, a humble and uh, down approach, I guess you always have the, a positive outcome because mm -hmm. they are, them too, they want to at least upgrade their standards of living. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing that comes to my mind when you spoke about the large gap, obviously technology is, it creates a big visual gap. You obviously said, you know, the way you, the way you approach people just coming there i mean obviously me being from the western world is, is even worse in a way but if you come here with your bottled water and all that and you you're fancier clothes from the town 
one thing that even makes it worse, I think, is that how do you want to then tell people what to do, so to speak? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you. I mean, w let's just assume that you are a person with really great knowledge in, in farming business. But how do you actually then translate that in order to not make make that too too heavy on people that you have the bottled water the whole all these things and then the knowledge and and then then you're supposed to meet on eye level and discuss it do you have any uh, tricks there or how could maybe social media help here uh let's say uh, if i take uh, as uh, i've been doing some uh, few trainings recently on uh, training agricultural uh farmers organization on uh, the use of some functionalities of a GPS in agriculture. Uh, most of the time, what do I do? When I go to the field, I uh, really just take the slight necessity. That is my, the logistical uh, tools that will be necessary for the training to say. Then when I reach the field, they always have this tendency to say, ah, uh, so what do you want? Do you drink? Uh, uh, fresh water do should we buy you water from this and other i usually tell them no you should leave i will drink what you guys drink uh what you guys are going to eat i'm going to eat it and uh, that's how uh, sociability starts off and uh, in the field of the discussion i can easily uh, carry out uh, the train i usually carry out the trainings and uh, the outputs are always really positive simply because uh, i put myself at the uh, at the same level as they are, as them. And uh, without forgetting why I am there, I do the training. And uh, after the end of the training, the restitutions are always positive, simply due to the way you come close to those people to train them on uh, certain aspects that can be prior for a uh, better productivity in the agricultural sector. So I don't think there is a particular uh, there's a particular tip or there's a particular trick for someone to be able to carry on such an activity or to socialize and uh, able to create this easy this easy link between uh, two zones that are not that closely related. It mm. simply depends on uh, your your humbleness and uh, the way you really want uh, the your the activities to carry on and mm. the impacts as well as the outcome of your activity. So I, for one, I don't really have a, it's just being humble, go to the field, uh, do as they do and carry on your activity. When you come back to your city, you'll be able now to uh, express it out via to the social media channels and uh, via to a, a blog post or I don't know what press to mm -hmm. say okay hi this is what happened in that community and uh, the results were this and that let me ask you one more question there in terms of how do you actually how can i actually uh, consider such a training taking place how do you actually do you meet in a small school type of uh, building or do you actually go out and you carry your own agricultural equipment with you and you show people how to do that? So that's how, how, how does it actually work? Or do you, what, how do you, or do you just talk to people wherever they are or how, how can I, how is your training done when you do that? Okay. Um, firstly, as I said, the training was, uh, was asked on, uh, training, uh, farmers organization that is a group of farmers that uh, carry on the same uh, that are carrying the same activity and uh, they have difficulties in uh, resolving some little issues prior to their development so um, the training was just a training on how to use the GPS in uh, agriculture to better manage and uh, exploit their agricultural field. So how is the, what was the methodology that I use? I think it's really simple because um, firstly, knowing that there are people in rural zones, there are those class of people that really don't like to read a lot. They don't have this time to sit down and read novels and uh, read this and read that. So the content, the, the content of the training, obviously I render it really fluid and uh, I associate it with much images because as we know, it is, 
is better. When you talk to people with image, it's really more expressive than uh, writing booklets of five, 10 pages, and uh, which I'm sure by the end of the day, they'll just go and drop it by the side on their tables and say, okay, the training is over, so I don't need to watch uh, these booklets. So when I go to the field, I have my equipments, I have uh, a poster, I mount posters uh, via PowerPoint and I print them on uh, these uh, huge batches which I can go and post on the wall with a lot of uh, images, of course. So when I go to the field, I have a, a training booklet of let's say 5 to 10 pages in which we have as well as much image as uh, eventual uh, inform narrative information and when that is done i tell them okay we are going to start with the booklet at, at a certain point we are going to close the booklets and we are going to focus ourselves on the powerpoint the posters that have been built and been pasted on the wall like that at least they'll be able to leave aside these narrative issues and focus themselves on the images that have been mounted on the, the paper wall poster and uh, when it is done, we discuss, we train, I may render the training some sort to be participative and uh, lively because even if you are somebody who has done a lot of institutions, when you come with this uh, spirit of narrow, always having the, the floor, only speaking on your own is <laughs> some sort of a burden for them. So you need to make them feel at ease as if they are in your house, they can speak freely, even if they have uh, what they say is not relevant, you permit them to get themselves expressed. And when there is this fluidity in terms of uh, intergenerational uh, talk on a particular thematic, obviously the outcomes are always great. And when you do so, especially in our zones, they'll always thank you and they'll bring you their rural uh, hospitality, they want to know that you are fine, you have ate well, you have drunk well, and uh, they always come to you and say, ah, okay, you said this, how is it going to be? Now that you're believing, how are we going to get close to you again? Do you have a contact? Do you have, do you have, do you have? So um, for a strategy, that's how uh, I usually carry out my trainings. I don't, I take just the strict necessities, my logistical equipment, posters that are filled with image and uh, some few legends by the side and with all that I can really carry out a really uh, interesting training because mm -hmm. I don't really need too much narrative papers or booklets because obviously when you do so at a certain period of time you even find those rural community members sleeping during the training because they don't know what it is to read, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, that, I mean, obviously, you need to cater for your audience, you know, and yeah, and, that's and, it. I, and what it means to just talk on your own, and that become can become a burden. I just experienced that when we started here because I was the only <laughs> one on. So, I, so, but I I know there's a lot of people for them. It, it's natural to speak a lot on their own. Let's just go back. Maybe you said you have PowerPoint, so obviously you have a computer with you already. And, and yeah. you obviously have that probably on, on paper as well. But yeah. how, how about, or how do you see the, the use maybe of little uh, cameras to actually uh, tape things in one sitting in, in the one, one little um, training scenario, obviously with the same local languages, you edit that up and you take it to the next one and you explain to them, oh, listen, look, that's how they do it over there. They do this and that. This is how, so you, so you slowly start using sort of video footage in a way social media tools or is that still way too too much effort to, to that you would have to go through with all the not only the equipment but also the the programs the cutting the editing and all that is that too much no um i for one i don't think it's uh it's too much for me because uh, as i said for when you go to a rural community, it is to have your attention, you really need to focus on uh, images, videotapes, and uh, educative and talking images. So if with a camera or with another tool, I can, I'm able to carry on this activity properly and I have uh, really good results, I won't uh, miss to do that. But as I said, in our country, 
uh, it's not all rural communities, first of all, that have access to light. And you know a laptop works with light. And uh, if you don't have light, obviously, it will be difficult for you to carry on this, uh, this activity. And with a camera, of course, a camera has a certain durability in terms of uh, battery uh, stockage, energy stockage. So uh, mm-hmm. it's always better to have your, your mount a poster you present and uh, you share it out. But if the training that can take uh, 45 minutes, one are good with a camera or with a videotape, you can do it. If you have even a generator at your disposal, which can uh, furnish the energy necessary for the, the videotape to be shared out, it will be a better asset. But if it's a th- three hours, four hours training in a zone where there's no light, it will be what okay. useless to say you put it in a camera or a generate you know, or a a, a modernized uh, ut- um, equipment than making it out right in the poster with images and testing it. And for sure, when the training is over, there's no need to go back with the, the poster presentation. Just allow it to the community for them to be able to use it after your passage. Mm-hmm. So uh, the two the two process is obviously really interesting, be it the camera, uh, the use of a videotape, the camera, uh, the use of posters. Those are modernized tools that can be used in both ways. So I do abide also to that uh, ability. Mm-hmm. Okay, before we go on, I, I saw you on the side that uh, Gina was uh, chatting along here and she was waiting for Nafshin to speak about her project. Yeah, that, sure. Even me, I noticed it. Yeah, that wasn't uh, just for all of you who joined in now lately. Nosheen uh, had general internet problems. I only received one message from her, and that's why I'm keep on looking on the other screen here on the on, on okay. my Outlook. She just couldn't get onto the internet, so that's all I knew. And then she never she never appeared. Reply. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but if I, anybody else wants to actually join in. In the center of Free. this, there it says, I think, call in. I can't see it. it. says call in or join or something. Yeah, it's calling. It's calling. Then you request, and I'm as a moderator, I'll, I'll let you in. If yeah. So if somebody wants to ask a question to me, to Gislaine, to just come on, just come on in and uh, join us. Yeah, I'll let you in. So don't don't be hesitant. Uh, this is just yeah, Pascal, also to try um, to... Do you think uh, there will be a possibility for Naoshin to really find time for her to share with us the, the vision of uh, this, uh, this project? That is, how is it going to be managed? Where shall be coming the content, the various resources for, to fill in the content of the, 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 the blog or, I don't know, the web TV? And uh, is it something that shall have a large scale, shall have, shall have a, last, a large scale uh, in Africa that is all African countries involved or you first of all start up with uh, a certain number of, of countries and uh, shall obviously expand as time goes by. So I don't know if she will have time to really reschedule this type of uh, blab online talk because I guess that is one of the keen issues that uh, interested that is of interesting most of those who are coming to this live chat yeah i you know i mean obviously i can't answer that uh, that question i okay. see uh, at the top there there's 56 people i i assume that's the people yeah. that are actually somewhere on the internet but not logged in mm-hmm. um so there is there's some interest in this and i know that nafshin they're, they're only launching this I think in two or three weeks time. So I'm, I'm not sure what is this a pre launch phase or whatever they call it. Oh, okay. So, that, so they are only rolling out now. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that she is interested and, and obviously she was interested. Uh, you know, we tested this twice. So, you know, so that's obvious. So I, I, I would assume that we can schedule this again. Yeah. And then we, we just need to make sure that I don't know how, how you can actually make sure we tested it twice. The internet connection was actually brilliant. We had picture even and everything. So that's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just uh, talk to her again tomorrow, whenever okay. she's back on. And then we, then we see maybe around the launch time or so that we do this again. And uh, okay. I will explain to her that there's people actually interested in actually seeing the vision. I can only yeah. I can only assume from my side to part of your question that obviously this is a a, a project funded by CTA, 
Mm -hmm. and obviously therefore it has a certain limit and yeah. like most of these projects whether they are actually rolled out longer wider whatever it depends on the on the uh, on the funding and that is um determine you know you know all, all these different factors that that determine whether funding is flowing is, is is not really only if things are necessary you know that there, there needs to be funds there there's a certain orientation in in donor funding and, and all that i think it does from my perspective it does have the capacity uh, in in theory obviously to 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 go out very strong you know um I, yeah yeah i think uh I think it's something really interesting. So um, I really guess that uh, if the CTA is involved in uh, this project, it then, it then means that uh, it's, how can I say, it's uh, implementation obviously will have a certain, will have a certain limit. I think so far I start because I think it's uh, after we shall observe the outcome of it that maybe uh, in some years to come, they'll be able to expand to expand the project. And I guess, but I also think that uh, it could be worthwhile enough to not only if the CTA is uh, involved, I guess even other countries in Africa can bring in their own inputs or their own contribution to see how this project will really have a, a, a better outreach be it in Africa or uh, at the international level. It's just, I just think it's something we really need to uh, consolidate the base grounds and uh, see how each stakeholder involved can uh, contribute to render this project a success. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, if Gina doesn't want to come on and talk to us here, then... Um... <laughs> then we can slowly wrap this up. I would be interested maybe to hear from you where you, where you think is the, the biggest strength on, on the sort of side of, of, of using tools like agribusiness TV, even though we don't really know how it patches out and, and we're not the people to discuss this here, but is it, is it more on the technology side is it is it showing people how to actually work with certain tools, how to plan certain things, or is it more also an empowerment tool, which also works on that people see that there's more of them and that they have also a bit of a power to um, to maybe stand their ground against uh, you know big buyers that push down their prices or the local councillor that uh, tries to you know, the, the political economy. Where do you see the, the, the strength? This is sort of a, it's something for you as a coming politician. Uh, I, for one, I think the, the first strength is uh, mostly acts on the empowerment. I think mm -hmm. the first strength is mostly acts on the empowerment. Why the empowerment? Uh, simply because um, when you are in a, a zone, let's take, for example, in a community where there's something innovative that is being brought up. When it is brought up and uh, people around really sees that it has a positive impact already for the individual and as well for those around, they obviously get themselves, you is going to work in their minds and their mindsets and say, ah, oh, yeah, this is something really great that is, uh, that somebody brought up and it's really having a positive impact. Why can I not do same and uh, see the, outcome of it also for my own perspective and uh, with that obviously it shall uh, bring each and everyone to contribute to practice and uh, make render this a something really interesting so i think the greatest strength of it is first of all the empowerment and uh, more to the empowerment it's uh, also another strength of it is that it is done by youth for a start it is done by youths. We know youths are the future leaders of tomorrow. And uh, as far as Africa is concerned, if I have to focalize on them, uh, its developments can be consolidated at a higher level if youths aren't engaged in this business. Mm. So um, when youths are engaged in this business, be it those that are really in a, at the grassroots level, 
those that are in the middle class level or those that are in the higher level when they are involved in this business uh, obviously it's going to be for an individual benefit for a start then a communal benefit a national benefit and with regards to what shall be promoted in terms of success stories worldwide obviously its impact is going to have a wider range so uh, for me those are the two points where uh, its strength is going to rely and of course if it is properly done uh, international and governmental institutions will be aware of such initiative and uh, it shall set bring a certain change in their mindset like oh there's something interesting that's going on why can't we uh, promote that also at our own level and you can see at the end we can we will be able to bring in all the 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 the, the food chain the food chain value members uh, in this project and uh, if this is attained i'm sure uh, it will be for the benefits of all mm -hmm. that's almost a good way to close i from my side maybe you have something to say about that too is that i think almost philosophically youth can be you can't can you know conceive youth without the other pole so to speak the older ones and you know there's it's important i think for knowledge gaps not to actually get too wide and yeah. if you want if you want if you don't want to lose knowledge then you want to obviously make sure that you get connected to those who have it um, and it's not yeah, like a development sure. cooperation always that the first world has the knowledge that the third world wants to get you. It's probably not that one way anyway. But I think maybe there's also a challenge for all this in getting the older, not the old, you know, the somewhat older uh, onto the system and actually relay their their information and maybe feel that they appreciate it and, you know, that they are also maybe listened and engaged a bit. So... Maybe there's also a bit of a challenge for the youngers to actually embrace also the other ones and get that out. Do you see, do you see an issue there or um, a possibility to get those guys also on board? Yeah, um, as, as we were discussing earlier enough, uh, it's what I can call an intergenerational mm. issue. It's an intergenerational issue because each generation has its history, has its evolution and has its way of thinking and functioning. So when uh, an old generation has already passed and there is already a new generation on the board, it's uh, no matter the modernity, the, the innovation, the, 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 the capabilities and the intellect that, is, that shall be forecasted at, in front, there's always this need to have an overview of what had been done. Always have an overview mm -hmm. of what had been done. And to have this overview, you obviously need to uh, take a step back and uh, come close to those who lived such events in the past. Let them share with you, okay, uh, this is what happened. This is, these are the results. These are the impact. With, these are the possible orientation for this or that aspect to be changed for your generational profit. And uh, with that in mind, you shall widen the new generation's brain on how to tackle upcoming or ongoing issues that shall be that shall permit a proper sustainability or a proper development of their generational uh, of the of that generation on the field so uh, i for one if we can't say the older generation doesn't have something to share about no i think they have something to share about they have some uh, tips that they can share with us. They have some perspective that they can share with us. And uh, with our abilities, we can now uh, hold all this information, see how we can modelize uh, it for it to have uh, a more modernized and conventional approach for the benefits of the new generation and for the upcoming generation. Because uh, what we need to do, is, what we need to have in mind is that uh, we are here for a certain period of time and obviously we don't have uh, this immortality gene in our skin so <laughs> we are here for a certain number of time we are going to pass out pass by and yeah. uh, we live our moments and as well we foresee the moments of those that will be coming ahead of us 
And to do that, yeah. you have to start from the basis, and the basis is the older generation. With what they will have to say, you will be able to uh, think accordingly and uh, obviously bring out something better for you and for the upcoming generations. So uh, mm. I think there should always be this intergenerational exchange for a better understanding of the concepts and uh, a better uh, setting to practice of new concepts. So from my own perspective, that is how I, uh, yeah. I see things. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, you're obviously a very experienced trainer there already. <laughs> um, where do you, where, how do you, how do you, how do you make people actually get one step further from, if you show something to them and you make them feel that this is interesting, how do you get into the next gear there and make sure that they actually see in that the blueprint for their own behavior? I mean, you talk intergenerational. If I have my kids, they might be finding my story quite interesting. And if I get more into factual things, it might not be that exciting anymore. Yeah. But they don't see themselves in the situation. I can say I was young too, or, or you will be here too at some point. They, they don't see it and it's not because they don't have the capacity it's just because it's that you know it, it's it's difficult to imagine yourself being in in another situation i mean i grew up here i can travel somewhere else i stayed years somewhere else but i still can't really imagine myself in in the different situation now the question for you again how do you actually relay that the sort of training which has a lot to do with your personal situation because we spoke about that it's a lot of making those aspirations to become a farmer to see the business opportunities maybe also some riches in there not just to make a living out of it as such how do you actually make them feel that this blueprint could be something for them not just interesting and it works for you but maybe not for me. okay any idea on that let me just uh Let's just exchange a little bit, okay? Um, that is, um, I'm coming to you to uh, make you a training maybe on uh, this GPS in agriculture I've been talking about so far. So um, let's just say, uh, I know in the past, um, far from years back, a GPS is a, is a tool that, is, uh, that permits one to have a straightforward and immediate uh, results on position on uh, positioning on some numerical or cat, uh, topographical issues data if i can call so we know maybe in the past if imagine for instance when there were no technology you had to live from one place to another without you knowing your environment your how what are the things that you may encounter on your way so you took mm -hmm. just yourself and said okay let me live from here and i'll reach to that area so while, when you were going, did you not have this uh, internal uh, idea that, okay, I need to mark around uh, on my track some little, I need to leave on my track some little uh, things that will permit me that if I have to come back, I'll rely on them to find my way back. You see? Mm. Okay. Let's say in the past, how were things moving? When somebody was entering in the, in the zone where he doesn't knew, he, doesn't, he never knew anything about it, let's just say forest. What does he do when he's walking at a certain number of miles in front of him he's going to mark he's going to leave a mark on a tree or he's going to destroy a little herb by the side to say oh okay when i'll be coming back if i see this herb it means i pass this way so obviously this is the road i've taken so in the past in the past people have been doing working that way in order to recover their uh their destination or their trip but now with the use of the GPS, there's no need for you to be cutting trees or to be marking signs on trees or to be, uh, I don't know, destroying something to say, oh, this is a mark that should help me recover my way. With the GPS, you can easily go somewhere. You just take its uh, coordinates, its waypoints, and uh, you continue going where you have to go to, knowing that at the end of the day, when you want to come back to your initial position, you just, be, you just focalize on the waypoints that you have been taking from your initial point of your initial point to your final set. So you see that's a, a generational link because you started with marking trees, with stones, with branches, and with I don't know what utensil, but now we are using a GPS, which just permits you to make with a simple click, you have your waypoints taken and you will never lose again your way. So that's a little 
Example, now, with that in mind, how can this new tool now permit you to uh, see your agricultural activity as a business and not as a, a subsistence issue? Because most people, especially in Africa, most farmers, they practice what we call substantial agriculture. That is what mm -hmm. comes from their fields, from the agricultural fields, they are going to take it that way, they are going to deal with it that way. What is going to provide as uh, revenues, they shall handle it that way. But with a GPS, if you are using a GPS, obviously you are already practicing what we call, you are practicing agricultural, agriculture as a business. You can't say, if I take um, an example of a culture, a cash crop like cocoa, for example, if you have a one uh, hectare field of cocoa and uh, what comes out in this field is not relevant to the, 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 the how can I say, the area, the square area of your agricultural spot, then there is a problem. There is a problem, which means if you have uh, an hectare, let's say an hectare of land at your disposal, what comes has to come out in terms of agricultural productivity needs to ally closely with the fields you have at your disposal. And to do that, you need to practice a more conventional and modernized agriculture. That is, at every step you want to carry out, you need, you need to take time to sit, to work it out, to brainstorm on it, and uh, to do what it takes to have uh, the maximum output and as well at a lower cost than uh, just doing things in a more traditional and uh, uh, classic manner as our parents were doing in the past. So those, that is mm -hmm. a little approach as I've been sharing with you on how I do the intergenerational transition. So I always take an example in how things were moving in the past, how it is doing now, and what it has as impact, it will have as impact tomorrow. So with mm -hmm. this uh, scheme of work, when you do it well, the results shall always be a success. So you can do something if you don't uh, focus, first of all, on uh, what did it, what happened in the past, how it is going on now, and what it can bring forward tomorrow. That's a good example. I wish you had a whole lot of them, then you could make a whole, a whole <laughs> training manual full of, of hands-on examples, how to actually sort of get people to listen and, and see the see the immediate advantage because uh, obviously that is the sort of the icebreaker to get the attention to to keep on following you in your <laughs> mind to to the probably more difficult things that you have to say because that's obviously not really directly related, yeah i think um uh, to, to, uh, to what my dad usually told me is uh, in every agricultural aspect and uh, in all domain of life in all uh, activity sectors there is always a background there's always a background. Mm. So one can say you just uh, come towards people, just say new things. They are, we, are, we are no longer, we are not uh, creating new things. We are just upgrading them. We are uh, modernizing them They're because everything that has been created were started in the past. So all what we are doing now is just to render them more useful to our daily activities, so our daily mode of uh, functioning and uh, how shall it be of impact for us and how will it be of a necessity for those who will be coming after us so you can't talk about the future or the present if you don't uh, have a little aspect or a little piece of information of of it that happened in the past so uh, it's something that's really clear something that's really clear as far as i'm concerned mm. that's why uh, i always take time to uh, bring this linkage in all uh, activities, training, capacity building sessions that I'm crying out because it's in that direction that people really perceive the importance of what you are trying to share out in terms of information. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, yeah. Ishmael, <laughs> that you joined us and that you gave and shared so so nicely all your experiences and obviously for me it was great because uh, we couldn't get enough sheen to actually yeah. log in so next time you should have a, a video maybe um, but 
before we we have is there anybody else who joined i saw, I saw uh, daniel really who good. just joined but uh, he hasn't uh, expressed himself already i think he dropped out uh, maybe okay. i think so maybe the connection anyway at the top where you see who's actually logged in two of us yeah two sure of us right now no. so there's no way <laughs> to I actually what i actually wanted to do besides obviously talking to nafshin and obviously talking to nafshin about her vision and i hope we and i'm pretty confident that find time to to do that come to that and some yeah but just for those who who listen in now you need to use firefox or chrome to actually really work with this if it does work at all and you need to have a twitter handle to log in which if you don't have one don't be too afraid of it you can just create one you can uh, you know you can just dismiss it later on you can use it under create it under any fun, funny name if you want to and then you log in and then you can also request here in the center of the page you can call in and i will say yes or no and bring you in and you can start talking so there's actually four people that can talk to each other here and on the left hand side where it says questions there you can type in questions if you want me to as a moderator or well, sometimes there's also a co-moderator i could have made this lane the co-moderator <laughs> uh, we can pick up the questions rephrase them and, and make sure that we answer them and then we yeah. kick them off and uh yeah the live chat obviously on the side sometimes uh, there's also separate conversations uh, developing there which is sometimes difficult for the People so get cool focused on that too. Completely so. brain split, yeah, yeah. But that is obvious what, what's happening on the right hand side. On the left hand side, there's questions basically more di directed to the people speaking. And in the center, you request to come on show, but for that you need to be logged in yeah. via Twitter. So I just wanted to take the opportunity for those uh, listening now, but not really participating in the sense to get a little bit more. <clears throat> um, knowledge on on what could be they could do in order to uh to, to participate more if they come on next time <laughs> okay anything from your side do you do, that you want to still share i have nothing on my <laughs> paper here i guess you have exhausted <laughs> all yeah. its content to say okay uh -huh. No, we, I could, uh, we, we could still keep on talking, but I don't want to scare people off by going very much longer than an hour. Oh, I mean, yeah. we had some connectivity things and before we really started talking, I don't know. One hour, 30 like, minutes has uh, already gone through to say yeah. 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I guess to, to have a proper conversation for about an hour, that's a good, good yeah. horizon to actually have. Otherwise, people say, "Oh no, next time it was great, but I don't want to you. I don't want to go and uh, listen and you know, watch Lord of the Rings three and a half hours. I, I don't have the time for that. So, um, want to contain this a little bit in, in in these limits of about an hour, so that people have an expectation um, how much time they have to actually schedule on on their diary. Okay, with that." Last word to you. Otherwise, I would close and promise to get Nafshin back on at some yeah, point. Yeah, um, I'll simply somebody else. Uh, pick up just the opportunity to thank you for have permitted me to share out my ideas and uh, better comprehend uh, the essence of this uh, initiative used in agribusiness web TV. It's true. Uh, the the best was to for Nafshin to be here or to for Inusa to share out a little bit uh, what they have in mind in terms of uh, vision and uh, mission, the aim and purpose, the main purpose and uh, eventual uh, awaited outcomes of this project. But nevertheless, uh, as I can trust your ability to get her back on stage, I do think uh, it shall be something that shall be rescheduled, obviously, and uh, it shall permit a wider range of uh, youths, no matter their location and their position to come close and uh, really talk about it because as I said, it's something that uh, is of uh, high necessity and it is really important. I, for one, uh, I've got a keen interest in agribusiness and uh, no matter the place or the area or when I already re see a hashtag or something on agribusiness, of course, I'm going to get myself in because 
when you know this concept of agribusiness, then you can be able to manage all the various food chain values at ease. So uh, mm. even if uh, someone hasn't done a, a training, a professional training, and uh, has been acknowledged on this on this uh, concept, with uh, all what is doing on the web, uh, on TVs, on social medias, one can really be a keen uh, speaker or a keen uh, uh, share share take out share talker about what agribusiness is. So, just for that, uh, thank you for the time that uh, the labs, the discussion. It was really uh, interesting. As I, for one, I really had uh, some uh, new ideas already via the, some of the questions you asked on targeted audience and all the like. Uh, and of course, I shall take the time to really work on it to have uh, something really relevant. So I just wanted to thank you for the time, uh, the assiduity and the concern thank you for the time. on uh, permitting us youths uh, all around the world to get to know this, uh, this initiative very well. And I really hope we shall have the opportunity to interact better, maybe not only on the Blab online talk, maybe via Twitter or, or else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody out there, go and suggest more subjects, more interview partners, more things. Go send them to me, and we, we try to keep this going. And obviously, anybody can then join in. Uh, it can, can be once a week, maybe even after some point. Uh, so far, it's just uh, it was only the second time, so I wouldn't want to establish a, a sort of certain intervals. But, uh, you know... Keep sending me suggestions who to talk to, um, who to invite as co-hosts uh, or co-speakers, and and we get this off the ground. Obviously for you. Okay, sure. Well. Thank you. Yeah? And we make a recording available on Blab here. That's sort of how this what the system generates. But I will also um, mix this up a tiny little bit uh, and and put it on. All right. On YouTube. That'll be very great. <laughs> All right. Okay. Great. Have okay, a nice Okay. Thank day, you, Pascal. Bye -bye. You're welcome.